stand by the rod of the apostolic. I move you forward, moving to your destiny. The first thing that the prayer that engenders dominion produces is access to the voice of God. If God is not speaking into your life, you'll be in trouble. It is by prayer that divine purposes are born. I told them in BSU when I was teaching a few weeks ago. I said you have many lecturers. Over a hundred lecturers on your hundreds. Teaching us that people carry over every time many are having years. And when I walked on the campus, I did not see any lecturer teaching dress code. No lecturer giving the responsibility of teaching the doctrine of Babylon. There was no lecturer teaching the ways of water. But if you look at the campus on a glance, then you discover that everybody is a student in the school of Babylon. Most of the students have many lecturers that teach them the ways of seduction because it had become a lifestyle consistent with the serpentine nature. So even though there were no courses they were reading, those dimensions could find expression through them. So you don't need to go and study lost. You don't need to go and study about seduction. When you look at them, the spirit of seduction can travel into your heart because those ones have become gateways by which the dimensions of ladies can find expression. The powers of culture is something you cannot undermine because when you see a man live by a certain culture, that man's life is a gate through which the realm that he manifests can break upon the landscape. That's why you see a lady dressed seductively and you begin to have lust. Unknown to the lady, she is actually giving expression to a government in another realm. So every time you interface with that lady, the spirits that live in that realm, they travel through her. You don't need to study how to find those spirits. You don't need to go to her to look for the spirit of immorality. When you look at an immoral lady, her life is a vent, a chamber through which the dimensions of immorality can be trafficked. So she's a chalice. She's a carrier of immoral demons. Cultures are very significant because only by culture can the will of God and the spirit of the monarch of Zion invade the territory. When we talk matters of culture, we are not going back to the law. We are actually talking about the true manifestation of the spirit of grace. Because when grace comes, it does not only bring salvation, it teaches us the ways of the kingdom. There are certain things I want to emphasize. I don't know if you can receive it. But many may think we are becoming legal, legalistic. This is not legalism. This is proof that the Spirit dwells in you. Jesus said that preach the word, come to me and find it nothing. <laughs> Do you know how demons and spirits connect to people? They connect to people through their predominant appetites. The Bible said we have not received the spirit that is of this world, but we have received the spirit that is of God. Therefore, we know the things that are freely given to us by God. So on the strength of the spirit of God that is at work in us, it is possible for us to know the dimensions of the spirit. The ways of God are no longer scarce because there is a spirit we have received. But he went to 1 John chapter 2 from verse 15. He said, love not the world. He said, they that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. He said, what is in the world? He said, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Therefore, those, those, those tendencies within, that person is already a carrier of the spirit of this world. If lust finds expression through you, you are what? A carrier of the spirit of this world. You don't need to go far to check. And the proof of it is that, all your actions will be controlled and regulated by lust. That's why the guy wants to drive a car because he wants to make a statement. That's why the guy dresses because he wants to make a statement. He is powered by lust. So his lifestyle is a reflection of his appetite. And his appetite is a gateway through which a spirit can break into his world. Unknown to him, he is the one changing the energy balance in the system. Because every time you bring a spirit into a territory, have altered the energy balance. The reason you enter some territory, it is easy for you to, 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 to fall into immorality is because the energy balance has been lifted. The threshold of immorality is high. So when you were at home, you didn't have lost all the time. But you came on campus and all of a sudden, every night, 
you feel like cleaving to somebody there is a balance the energy balance has been violated it's a revelation of appetites and the predominant culture in the system you get to certain places it's easy to slap and to kill because violence through their lifestyle have been conducted into that territory so much so the energy of violence is high so you come there the least provocation you take an action what you don't know is that the culture of those people have trapped an energy that have altered the balances that part of culture is something you cannot overemphasize it's a revelation of the will the mind of the spirit that rules over the territory that's why my moro of blessed memory he defined the kingdom a predominant influence of a king over a people creating a citizenry of people that give expression to his will as their natural lifestyle so when the holy ghost begins to walk in you the dimensions of heaven become your lifestyle so what we want to x-ray tonight are some of the realities that are the predominant manifested expressed dimensions characters that are in the heavens so that if they look at you they will not know whether you are on earth jesus said the son of man which is in heaven he was walking in galilee paul said we have been named into the family that is both in heaven and on earth because when you look at a man who lives the lifestyle of heaven it's not different from an angel if an angel worships God in spirit and in truth, that man also worships in spirit and in truth. If an angel obeys God perpetually, that man also obeys God perpetually. So in heaven he can stand with the ranking immortals as one of them. That was why when John went to heaven, there was no segregation. He showed up, he was among the twenty and four elders. Because he was in their rank. By reason of who he is on earth, when the heavens open, you don't need to introduce him. He, that is his family. He has always been part of them. He resembles them. He looks like them. When he saw the glories of heaven, it was so much he wanted to bow down. The guy said, no, 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 worship me not. I am your fellow brethren. The problem is that we are in different locations, but we are the same. When you check me out and you check yourself, the DNA is one. The lifestyle is the same. That's why the things that happen in heaven happen around your life. It is that lifestyle that makes it possible for this man to touch the sick and the sick is healed. Because something flows through them. Something flows. It's not doing try and error. Try to say pray like this or come out, come out. When he shows up, demons leave because he's an ambassador of a realm is the power of a kingdom many christians are not taught oh, we come to church because we are religious people we don't understand what is happening god is building the world god is building the kingdom that kingdom is already established in the spirit realm he wants to bet it in the natural and you and i are his laborers so what you are doing but the Holy Ghost is inspiring you to do that you think uh, you are just living a good life maybe it's the window of the new Jerusalem you are building you don't know you are part of the mercenaries that are building an invisible kingdom in the natural when the Holy Ghost comes and says Kai 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 Peter go this way go this way and then you demonstrate the lifestyle of God somebody slaps you you wanted to respond they say calm you are proved that is patient and long suffering. <laughs> Everybody sees the lady they fall. The lady comes before you and strip herself naked. You say, Sister, sister, this is a shame. It's a proof that God is a righteous God. So, what we call lifestyle a predominant revelation of the dimensions of God. It's when the new Jerusalem that you will know. That what you were doing that you thought was a lifestyle, you were actually building part of that system. The Bible said concerning the 12 apostles, he said they were written on the 12 pillars of the new Jerusalem. 
So the life they live were pillars. They thought they were living. Meanwhile, the world God was building, they are the pillars that we supported. So their lives were pillars in Zion. Maybe your own life is a window. Yours may be a roof. You don't know. And you are playing with it. Satash. <laughs> Even preachers don't understand what I'm telling you. Many don't know it. They think ministry is about publicity, popularity. So you're on Facebook, you're on CNN. There's nothing wrong in revealing what God is doing so that people can be reached and helped. But it's not about the show. That's why a man can raise 12 people. And those 12 people, the Bible said, these be the men that turn their words upside down. For Jesus, it was not about crowd. It was about the kingdom. So that if you are the only one in Unnewi, everyone can and say, there's a man there. Job said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tongue, he said, by light, I walked through darkness. It doesn't matter the civilization that the men from the east were living. Job was a lampstand. Every time heaven looked at the east, there was a man God could brag about. Because his life was a shining light. The east was illuminated because Job stood there and God lived with him perpetually. He said, when I put my feet in butter and the mountains washed out to me rivers of oil. He was an extension of Zion. Every time God could go to Hades and say, have you seen my servant Job? Have you seen Job? The devil can come and brag and say, everybody has become my slave. He say, have you seen what man tossing? There is a man who has not bowed to darkness. The Bible said, because of Noah, the whole world was judged. The lifestyle of one man can contain a generation because he chose to be a lampstand that gave expression to the dimensions of heaven. One man the Bible said, Saviors shall come from Mount Zion to judge the mountains of Esau. The word judge is not to polish, it's to reveal a dimension. It's to showcase a system so that when they look at you, they can take bearing. That was why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You don't need to read the Bible. If you live with me, you will become like God because I have become like unto him. I, I don't just have righteousness in my spirit and a manifestation of righteousness. If you stay with me long enough, when people look at you, it's Jesus that we see. How do men become so mighty? They are keepers of the eternal counsel of God. They are custodians of spiritual heritages. They are watchers over the possibilities that God releases to the earthly part time. Daniel will be in a cave. The whole system of Babylon is running. And then when there's a crisis, they say there is a man in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. They know that every time you want to drop bearing from heaven, you don't need to go and pray. Call Daniel. When Daniel shows up, you will see the dimensions of heaven. There's a man in thy in whom dwelleth the spirit of the Holy Ghost. He showed up and he told Nebuchadnezzar. He said, this is the meaning of your dream. The Lord exalted you. Your throne reached to the heavens and its wings touched the, the boundary of the earth. And then you say with your hand you have done this. Therefore your heart will be taken and the heart of a beast will be given to you. Who taught him so much wisdom? How did he learn? By what syllabus was he educated? Where did he read from? He had never spoken to the king on the matter. The man had gathered all the astrologers. Astrologers, people who can manipulate the alignment patterns of the heavens. 
he had manipulated called the sorcerers and the magician they were stranded at some point they said this kind of knowledge dwells only with the holy gods and they were right because Tani had lived among the gods that was why his life was a revelation of the nature of God a man who cannot demonstrate the nature of God a man who cannot reveal the dimensions of heaven does not have the nature of God in his spirit because it will compel you people come and they give all kinds of excuses to do what they want to do is the serpentine nature that rules over you I hear people talk about trying to hear God I say who taught you how to hear the devil who taught because you have this nature Jesus said if you are my sheep my sheep hear me and they follow who taught you the voice of the devil because the nature of the devil still rules over you the, the nature of God begins to rule over you it becomes expressed to hear the voice of God say I fell I fell who taught you to fall why did you learn to stand since you learned how to fall because the nature is regulating you when you yield to the nature of God, your life will become a definition of possibilities in the heavens. Men will study you. Paul say we are written epistles. You are you are liberty to come and study us. When you study us, you will know the ways of God. Come and live in my house. You will see a God living in a mortal vessel. Because the things you will find me do, mortal men don't do them. That's a man who has only one cloth. Take it. Take it, walk through here, take it. It's demonstrating a nature that is beyond mortality. He has only 100 naira. You say you are hungry, say take. What will you eat? He's showing you a nature that is beyond mortality. You are crying every day. I'm falling, I'm falling. And then you see him live comfortably for three years. And you cannot trace any form of iniquity. It's a nature. It's a revelation of the dimensions of heaven where men serve God perpetually in holiness. If you have not been taught to live to enter his rest, where his possibilities flow through you, you have not begun to live. You will get to heaven and discover you, you wasted your life. The Holy Ghost troubles us every day. Sometimes every time I fall. The Holy Ghost must tell me. And he must insist that I rise. And sometimes I say, is this your only job description? Because he's building a kingdom. And you are a part of the blocks. Every time you refuse to yield. So that the possibilities of heaven flow through you. What you are doing is that you are making yourself an oblong block. The things the Holy Ghost is doing with you. Is the way blocks are chiseled so that they can fit. So he's chiseling your excesses because the angle you are supposed to fit you were the one predestinated to enter there and the holy ghost on account of love will never let you until you fall and fit into that angle because before you came it was written it was written every time we demonstrate the nature of god and it becomes our lifestyle we are part of a beauty that god is raising in the spirit that's why he said we are stones lively stones lively stones but before you become a lively stone you must be chiseled you will when the holy ghost is cutting your pride there is something he wants you to manifest the meekness of god it can't flow when pride is there and if you become a proud man your gospel is already a betrayer because your nature will deny what you profess the world is not only out to hear what you have to say they are looking at you also every friday you are leading worship in some in church but in class you are the talker that gossips everybody you are a clown the world is not only hearing the gospel they are seeing it they hear what you preach but they see the life you live so your culture, your predominant lifestyle and characteristic is significant, as significant as the gospel you preach. You will hear me talk like this, you may even think you are under fire. Go out tomorrow and see me hug a hug lady, young lady. My gospel will collapse. It doesn't matter what I say. Because my lifestyle weighs the same 
with my preaching on the scales of immortal balances. It is better to live the right life and not preach than to preach and live a wrong life. Because if you live a right life and don't preach, the territory will be preserved. But if you preach and live a wrong life, you give access to demons and territorial spirits. Adam was not preaching, he was only living and he lost the authority of humankind to the devil. The devil became the god of this world, not because Satan was talking, but because he was living wrongly. He yielded to the devil, and the world is lost forever.